Good evening. Thanks for joining me for a little dash of SALT. I am Dr. Anna Herbst from SALT Health in Bentonville, Arkansas, and I've had a lot of questions about the COVID vaccination, my opinion on it, and whether or not I'm going to get it. I am definitely not an expert on this subject, but I have been following the literature and, and really watching the research um, so that I can help make my own personal decision um, be the best decision for me, but also to help sort of navigate uh, and field my patients' uh, questions. So I thought I'd share with you tonight what I have learned <clears throat> over the last several months. So they're rolling out the uh, COVID-19 vaccination uh, pretty regularly right now. I know healthcare workers um, are at the top of the list for the first to get as well as immune compromised and the more mature populations. So um, I just thought I'd let you know a few things. So top six things we're going to talk about. One, there are two different types of vaccinations, but not types, sorry. They're the same type of vaccination, but there's two brands on the market. Um, how does it work? What are the differences in the two brands and why is it important to know? Um, what are some of the things to expect, as, uh, especially some of the reported side effects uh, or potential side effects? And um, a little bit about how the process worked in development and then um, any contraindications that I know of. So there are two brands, as I was saying, one is a, a brand by the company Moderna and the other is a Pfizer brand uh, vaccination. And so um, before we talk about the differences between the two, I think it's best for us to kind of understand what type of vaccination this is. This is a messenger RNA vaccination. Uh, in order to understand how it works, uh, we probably need to know what a messenger RNA is in the first place. So it is not going to alter your DNA. RNA is similar to that of a blueprint for what your, um, your DNA is, so what you're going to be or what you're going to develop or what your body's going to um, produce. And so a messenger RNA is actually just a copy of that blueprint. And so what they've done is they said, well, when the body uh, gets exposed to COVID-19, it mounts this immune response. And so it's the body's way of getting rid of the stranger danger, the COVID-19. And in order to um, mount an immune response, the body has to recognize something or this stranger danger, and in this case, COVID-19. And what um, one of the first things the body would see would be those little spikes that stick out on the little circle that you've seen in the pictures of the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus. And so they've developed a uh, vaccination that codes for those spikes. So it's a messenger RNA coding for those spikes. And so that way, when you and or if you get exposed to the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus 19, then your body will recognize that spike from the vaccination and it will call it a stranger danger and it will mount a an immune response to fight it immediately so that um, it uses its memory cells from the vaccinations to elicit an immune response right away. That will decrease the um, length that potentially the idea would be that it decreases the length that you would have the infection and also uh, stopping the replication. Thus, it would make sense that, and it is meant to um, reduce the symptoms um, and the, the potency of that virus. So <clears throat> that's how messenger RNA uh, vaccinations work. Um, <clears throat> once you get the vaccination, the um, messenger RNA will go in and it will replicate, start producing its, its copies of this blueprint for the spike protein um, for COVID-19. And when it starts to reproduce these spike proteins, the body's going to recognize that as a problem and say, hey, what the heck's happening here? And so um, the body then says, call all troops, get, you know, call the immune system, help us out, mount an inflammatory response, mount an immune response to the stranger danger that's replicating in my inside my cell. And so when that happens, the body will attack it. The mRNA is programmed to de degrade over time so it doesn't stay there and keep replicating. They made it to where it would just, it will degrade over time. But what happens is that immune response that was elicited during uh, and right after you get vaccinated, 
that created this, um, these memory cells. So there are memory cells, these immune cells that remember the stranger. And so that that way, the next time when you get your booster shot, you'll mount another uh, an immune response and get a little bit more memory cells put into the, um, to the attack system, to the immune system. And that way, if we get exposed, then of course we can mount that really quickly, uh, quick response and get rid of the virus quicker. And so that's how that works. Both of the vaccinations were rolled out under the Emergency Act. And so that means it was produced quickly. However, I did learn and was happy to know that the messenger RNA uh, vaccinations are not really new to the market. They're just new in, in the light of viruses. So uh, they've been using it since actually originally about the late 1990s. And then they uh, have been doing a lot of research um, and produced some mRNA vaccinations in 2011. They were actually stopped because they were producing a lot of uh, pretty severe side effects um, and they were using in cancer research. So, um, but what they realized from that was it was the amount of messenger RNA they were using that was creating such a, a bad side effect profile. So they've reduced the amount and that's what they're using with uh, this vaccination. And it seems to be doing pretty well in the clinical trials. When you're speeding up the clinical trials through the Emergency Act, they actually rolled out the vaccination in about eight weeks. And then it has started on, uh, been going through uh, phase one, phase two, and now in phase three clinical trials. They will continue to gather data over the next two years. Um, let's see what else. Oh. The differences between the two, just some fun facts, but there is a difference. So the Moderna uh, vaccination actually has not been given to children under 16, nor has it been studied in children under 16. They are undergoing study in children uh, now, but prior to rolling out, they had did not have a lot of data on that. So that's not what that's for. So Moderna, no children under 16. Um, the other is the Pfizer vaccination. Um, well, actually both vaccinations, you have to have your initial vaccination and then you'll wait a period of time and have a second vaccination. The Pfizer vaccination, you have to wait 21 days. The Moderna vaccination, you're gonna wait 28 days. And so um, that's important to know which one you're getting so that you know how long you have to wait in between. And they store at different temperatures, which is interesting, but this is probably one of the reasons that we won't be using them, or I'm sorry, uh, administering them in outpatient settings because it requires pretty significant refrigeration. Um, the Moderna has to be uh, refrigerated at minus four Fahrenheit and the Pfizer vaccination has to be um, refrigerated at minus 94 Fahrenheit. Fun fact and different uh, for reference, it uh, gets on average to about minus 16 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica. So pretty darn cold for that Pfizer vaccination. Um, they can be, at least the Moderna can be refrigerated for 30 days and kept at room temperature for about 12 hours. So making it very difficult for us outpatient physicians to um, buy, store, and administer with proper care. Um, <clears throat> also, the Moderna vaccination is actually delivering more vaccine, about 100 micrograms in a vaccination, as opposed to the Pfizer, which is about 30 micrograms per vaccination. Um, I don't know the details because I think because it's still in, in a clinical trial, there's not a lot of information about, you know, the exact details and what's in the vaccination other than in mRNA coding for the spike virus for uh, SARS-CoV-2. Um, and so the other things, oh, um, something else that I did learn that I think is important is that uh, the phase three clinical trials has been looking at over 40,000 people thus far. Um, and the biggest um, side effects would be um, the ache and pain in the, in the site of the injection. There has been some inflammatory responses noted, especially after the second vaccination, meaning that you kind of get flu-like, myalgias, muscle soreness, even a low-grade fever for a couple of days, uh, about the day or so after you're vaccinated for a couple more days. And they say that that's actually worse after the second dose. Um, probably because you're eliciting a bigger immune response would be my, my guess. Um, but anyway, that's been noted. Other than that, no real major side effects uh, have been documented thus far. There has been some mild, um, or not mild, some uh, very small portion of the uh, studied 
cohort, um, the population that was studied, had some allergic reactions, and that was about less than one uh, percent um, had allergic, like anaphylactic type reactions. And they're going to be people that typically um, they're saying you shouldn't get vaccinated if you've had anaphylactic reactions to any vaccinations uh, in the past. <clears throat> um, they did not test the vaccination on COVID positive patient population. Um, and they did not test on children, as I was saying before. Um, one thing I, I will say is that there's not a lot of information about um, vaccinating those that are immune compromised or, or autoimmune patients. They did not really study that subset of population, but they are recommending that those patients get vaccinated, especially your immune compromised, because the, the benefit uh, outweighs the risk, um, and that's per CDC guidelines. As far as autoimmune patients, they say there's no contraindication. Um, I personally, you know, have a vested interest in, in what kind of an immune response that, that I'm going to have when I get vaccinated, and um, I'll just do the best I can at supporting my immune system. Um, so my advice to everybody is, you know, learn as much as you can about the vaccination uh, study, make a really good, educated, sound decision for yourself and for um, those around you. Um, remember that getting the vaccination does not keep you from spreading. So you could still be potentially be a super spreader. So you continue to wear your mask, you know, exercise proper social distancing. And, you know, ultimately it's about being well and staying healthy. So take your vitamins, get some sunshine, uh, get outside in the fresh air, and of course, continue to wear your mask and, and social distance. You guys have a fantastic evening and thanks for listening.